This managerial accounting module is on budgeting and performance evaluation. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to identify each of the budgets for a manufacturing company and be able to identify which order they must be prepared. You should also be able to compute basic revenue and expense variances. Let's start by thinking back to the overview of the managerial accounting module where we discuss the major activities involved in a manager's decision-making process. Recall that the first activity was planning, and a key component of planning is budgeting. Budgets are the quantitative representations of a course of action. In this module, we are going to discuss the primary budgets of a manufacturing business and the order they need to be prepared. However, a service business structure can be easily adapted from this presentation. So let's get started. The first budget to prepare is the sales budget. The sales budget shows the expected sales for the budget period. It is prepared using the information from the sales forecast provided by the marketing department. Now that we have expected sales, we can prepare the production budget. The production budget shows the number of units that must be produced to meet expected sales and desired inventory levels. For example, we may need to build up inventory in one budget period to meet an expected spike in sales during the next budget period. Once we have production levels, we can prepare the following three budgets, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. These budgets will indicate both the quantities and the cost of each of these items. The cost amounts from the three budgets flow into the cash budget. The cash budget shows how cash resources will be acquired and used over the budget period. This budget is crucial. A cash shortage can have a devastating effect on a business. Two other budgets also flow in the cash budget. The first one is the Selling and Administrative Expense Budget. This budget shows all of the expected expenses in areas other than manufacturing. The second other budget to flow into the cash budget is the Capital Budget. The Capital Budget shows the expected outlays for long-term assets such as buildings and equipment. Once we have all of our budgets prepared, we then can prepare budgeted financial statements. All of these budgets provide the foundation for the next step for the manager, the implementation of the planned activities. After implementation, the manager will then evaluate actual results. Performance evaluation is crucial. The manager needs to know if actual results met expectations so that unwanted deviations can be avoided in the future and desired deviations can be repeated. One of the most popular measures of performance evaluation is the computation of variances. A variance is simply the actual amount of revenue or cost minus the amount of budgeted for that revenue or cost. For example, assume a company budgeted for sales of $200,000 for the year, but only achieved $180,000 in actual sales for the year. When budgeted sales are subtracted from actual sales, we arrive at a negative amount of $20,000. This variance is unfavorable because a business prefers to have sales exceed expectations, not fall short. Now, let's look at expenses. Assume the same company budgeted expenses of $148,000. However, actual expenses were only $140,000. When budgeted expenses are subtracted from actual expenses, we arrive at a negative amount of $8,000. However, for expenses, a negative amount is favorable. This is because a business prefers to reduce, not increase, expenses. But we need to be cautious about computing variances for expenses. We need to use flexible budget expense amounts and not static budget expense amounts. Let's look back at our example presented. Sales fell short by 10%, or $20,000. In the example, 
We calculated the variance based on the original budgeted expenses, also referred to as the static budget expense amounts. In other words, the expense amount is set to one level of activity. However, if we are at a reduced level of sales, we would also expect some expenses to be reduced. Therefore, when we compare actual expenses to budgeted expenses, we need to compare using what would have been budgeted for the reduced level of activity, not the original budgeted amount. In other words, we have to use the corrected flexible budget amount and not the original static budget amount. This means in a flexible budget, the budgeted expense is adjustable to any level of activity. This completes our discussion of the budgeting process and performance evaluation. Let's review the key terms and concepts introduced in this module. They are listed here in the order they were introduced. Sales budget, production budget, direct materials budget, direct labor budget, manufacturing overhead budget, cash budget, selling and administrative budget, capital budget, variance calculations, static budget, and flexible budget. If there are any of these terms or concepts you are unable to describe, return back to the module for review. If not, this concludes our budgeting and performance evaluation module.